Uh, for those who guys, uh, for those of you guys who can actually hear me, uh, could you just kindly type into the box that you can hear me, and I'll I'll be sharing my screen right away. Hi there, guys. Yes, you can hear me. That's brilliant. I'm just going to be sharing my screen as well. I uh, wonder whether you can now see my screen and... I'm actually showing you the uh, TickMill demo account uh, MT4 or MetaTrader 4 uh, platform. You guys can see that as well. And we could then start straight away, dive into that. I do apologize for that delay. You guys can hear me all loud and clear. Um, see my screen as well. Perfect. Okay, that's good. Now I'm just gonna get my uh, presentation slide up and we can then start in less than a minute. I know you guys have been waiting for a very long time, so uh, I do apologize for that. I'd like to welcome you guys. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you for your patience as well. And I do apologize for the technical issue that we have had earlier on. Uh, and uh, welcome to today's uh, course. It's the first part of your TickMill uh, course. And this course actually entails the very basics of understanding uh, the market and uh, how do you actually get a little know-hows, practical know-how to actually understand uh, very quickly, sort of like a micro-learning type course to uh, be able to understand and practice on your demo account and then decide uh, to go into your life account to start uh, trading uh, with TickMill. Okay, so uh, this uh, course has been uh, proudly brought to you by TickMill and my name is Kenny Simon, your mentor tonight. So uh, here we go. I'm actually showing you now... Um, um, the TickMill MT4 account, and this is how your candlestick chart looks like. Okay, I'm just going to give you very, very quick and easy way uh, of actually understanding the market, understanding trend, first of all, and then we get into a little bit of a nitty gritty of how it actually works in the Forex market. But um, for those of you guys who, are, who have some basic experience as well, you guys can actually stay on because I'm going to be covering... Uh, the usage of moving average as well. And this is how we are going to be analyzing the market um, with trends. So it's going to be very, very interesting. So just stay put and uh, uh, you can actually ask me at the end of the uh, of the webinar as well. Okay, guys. All right, here we go. Now we're looking into the Euro USD at this moment of time. Now you are on your MT4 platform. Now, once you've got your MT4 platform, um, the TickMill MT4 platform can be downloaded on, uh, from their website. Okay, you've got a, a choice of either your demo account or a live account. Let's say if we are on the uh, on the account at the moment, your MT4 platform, you'll get that window right here. That window right here, I'm just going to explain to you the very, very basics of things. Now, we are always looking at currency rates. So in Forex, uh, in the business of Forex trading, we're not actually trading physical cash. So we're not actually exchanging cash. But what we're actually looking into making um, uh, we're looking into predicting the market and basically uh, would look into a side income by predicting the market. So what we're actually predicting is the ups and downs of the currency rates itself. 
Okay, so that is, this is the business of Forex trading. We're predicting, making a focus on how the uh, currency rates move. Okay, um, you can only see my slide. Uh, okay, not the platform. Give me a second. Let me just try that again. It's probably a little bit of a, just a screen share right here. Give me a second. Give me a second, guys. Bear with me. I'm just going to do that very quickly. Okay, let's try that now. Okay, now can you see my screen? MT4 platform. Is it clear now? Okay, fantastic. Let's get to it now. Okay, a little bit more of... Uh, the uh, technical side of things again. Okay, let's let's get going, guys. Okay, so here we're looking at. Uh, I mean, it's it's live market movement at this moment of time. We're looking into the Euro USD at this moment of time. Now, when when I say Euro USD, we're always we are always paying attention to the currency to the left. So the currency to the left. That chart is for the Euro and not for the USD. So we're comparing the Euro against the usd now the first currency on the left you see all these uh, this market watch here has got all the instruments and then you've got the word bid and you've got the word ask as well so for those of you guys who are really really new very easy now remember this write it down if you see the word bid that is your selling price okay if you see the word ask then you want to be buying with that price so very easy once more bid is your selling price and ask is your buying price bid selling ask buying now very easy one more thing i would like you to understand the, the simplicity of forex is such that you are predicting the market whether it goes up or whether it goes down now i want you to forget about anything that has got to do with stocks and and buying low or selling high and that kind of thing just Take that away and put that aside for now. And what we want to do is we want to start with simplicity of Forex trading. And the simplicity is very, very simple. Now, what it means is that when you are looking at, when you're expecting the market to go up in the Forex business, you want to be buying. If you're expecting the euro to be going up, now, it could actually be, um, you know, impacted by news. It could be impacted by many things. Many factors could actually impact the movement, the rise and fall of a currency rate. Okay, so if you're looking into the euro going up or let's say you've heard about the news and you've got... Um, something good something positive that would drive the euro going up economy is good gdp or anything like that could drive the euro up let's say so if you're expecting more upward appreciation of the euro then in the forex business if you want to look into trading uh, the euro usd then you want to be looking into the buy side okay so you want to always be buying or looking into buying when you have expected the that particular uh, currency to be appreciating in value. So very simple. Let's put that again once, once more. When you actually predict or forecast a particular currency to be going up, then you want to buy. The higher it goes up and after your forecast, it goes up and up and up and up, then you actually would be most probably making money from there because you have predicted the right direction of the market for the euro or that currency rate. Okay, very easy. So what goes up, you want to buy. Now, on the contrary, what goes down, you want to actually sell. So if you have heard something negative, something that actually impacted the euro to the downside, let's say crisis, something's not really good with the economy or anything like that, then it causes the euro to fall. Now, if you are actually as a trader, forex trading, predicting or forecasting the euro to fall even more, further that actually means that you're predicting it to actually fall more and you want to be on the sell side hi there lemmy uh, i think uh, the, this um this webinar will be recorded uh, it is actually recorded and uh, you can kindly um contact your account manager uh, at tickmill as well that will actually guide you through in obtaining your recorded uh, version of this webinar okay let me all right so uh, that's basically it. So uh, to put it very sim simply, you want to buy when you're actually um, forecasting the market to actually go up or appreciate much more. And you want to actually sell if you're predicting or forecasting the market or that there is a depreciative value of that currency. 
very simple, right? Okay, now here, when we're looking at Euro USD right here, you've got time frames as well. You see all these numbers that you, you can actually see here. You've got your M1, you've got your M5, all the M's stands for minutes. So you've got a minute, one minute, five minute, 15 minutes chart, 30 minutes chart, and then all the H stands for hour, okay? So you've got one hour here for H1, four hour for H4. D stands for daily, weekly, monthly. Now, what does this all mean? This is very simple. When you actually click onto the H1, let's say one hour, all it means is that all these candles that you see are actually moving in one hour. After an hour, you've got a new candle. Okay, so if I get that crosshair thing here, if I click onto that little plus sign there and I move that about and I go onto this one candle right here, at the very bottom, it gives me the time. It gives me the time, let's say my Cypress time right here in Limassol is seven o'clock. Okay, so seven o'clock for one hour chart means that from seven o'clock to eight o'clock, with that candle would last from seven o'clock to eight o'clock. And once um, it finishes at eight, then from eight to nine, you've got a new candle that appears. That's it. As easy as that. So if you've got your one hour means every one candle lasts for an hour. And if it's for four hour, the same thing. Every one candle lasts for four hours. The same for the minutes one as well, 15 minutes chart. Every one candle lasts for 15 minutes. And then you've got a new one that comes after 15 minutes. So that's simple as that. Okay, so you've got um, your shorter time frame. You've got your middle one, which is your one hour. And then you've got your longer time frames as well. So that's basically it. very, very easy, yeah? So here you go. Now, you would be seeing all the prices right here. Now, you are on a live market at this moment of time. Now, on your Tickmill MT4 um, platform right here, one of the most important thing, once you have actually downloaded your Tickmill MT4 platform, you need to go right down to the very bottom to your right. You see that half green and half red? It needs to be half green and half red to tell you that your MT4 is connected or you are connected to the internet. Okay, so you need to have active internet Wi-Fi to actually have your MT4 connected. Once you're connected, only then you'll get live rates like this. So all these live rates, now for example, Euro USD. Okay, so Euro USD is trading at, you see that price, you see that horizontal little line that points to your right. On your right, you've got 1.2341 or 4. Uh, one nine four two zero and that last two digit keeps going up and down and that's that means that your platform currently it's on a live market your rates are just moving live okay so you've got all these rates going up and down right so when they go up and they go to a higher value that actually means that the euro has appreciated against the us dollar okay so what this means is that the euro um the euro is always called the base currency so all the currencies that you see when you you will always see that in forex trading it always will come as a pair it's like it's like girlfriend boyfriend husband wife you know in a pair right so you always will have a, you will always be trading um currency pairs okay as opposed to just one currency so that actually means that in forex trading it's simultaneous buying and selling when you actually click on buying what you are actually buying you're always buying the base currency so the first currency on the left is really important so what that means is that when you're looking into the chart you're looking into the chart right now that chart will be for the currency on the left. So this will be a euro currency, right? This chart, sorry, will be for euro. So you're looking at the euro prices. You're looking at the candlesticks going up. That actually means that the higher it goes up, the bigger the candle pointing upwards. That means the more euro has, has risen, okay? So euro is your base currency. USD is your coat currency, okay? You'll be coated your profit and everything else in the currency on the right actually before it gets uh, converted to the dollar again if it is not dollar okay so right in this case euro is your base and usd is your code currency now euro for example you're looking into predicting and forecasting the euro 
Okay, so now you've got that instruments. All these currency pairs that you see are called instruments. Okay, they come under the word symbol as well. Now, as I've mentioned earlier on, you've got bid, which is your selling price, and ask is your buying price. Now, I've also mentioned that in Forex trading, if you're predicting the market to actually go up, then you want to be buying. If you're buying, you'll be buying under the buying price, which comes under the asking price. Okay, so if you click on this, button right here on your MT4, this is where your order um, receipt or, or a little order sort of transaction kind of window appears. And this gives you all the necessary information to fill in your order in order for you to make that transaction. So you can actually easily try, get your demo account, take no demo account, upload it, download it, and then you can practice because there's no real money involved here. It's all paper money. Okay, so it's a virtual money as well, and it's a virtual account, but it's based on live market rates at this moment of time. So it, it simulates um, everything that you actually would be doing on your live account. So this is a good practice for you. So here, this first window right here would actually give you the idea of what exactly uh, would you be actually trading. Okay, so we'll just go on to a couple of... Um, pairs right here just to give you an idea what does AUD mean what does Euro, EUR mean so AUD stands for your Australian dollar once you've actually um, toggle along and you put your cursor right onto it it gives you that detail as well that little window appears right and it gives you an idea that okay AUD is your Australian dollar USD is your U US dollars easy as that EUR stands for your euro okay GBP is your great British pound or pound sterling um, JPY is your yen, okay? Now, I want you guys to uh, try writing down all these little, little points that I'm actually talking about because what we will do is to test you on a test. So we've, we've got quiz questions that would actually come out uh, for you, a 20 uh, quiz question uh, that will actually test you on all the things that's been presented onto the video, uh, onto the webinar. So all these webinars will be recorded and uh, you'll be able to play them uh, over and over until you actually uh, get all the hints to answer the quiz questions. Okay, guys. So you've got, um, let's continue on the, um, on the, uh, uh, what do you call that, abbreviations of each uh, currency. So here you've got all nicknames, we call it. Um, the other thing as well is the AUD, for example, or the USD. Let's start with the USD. The USD uh, or the US dollar has got a nickname, a nickname that is greenback. Okay, so it's called the greenback. The USD is called the greenback. Now, AUD is called the Aussie. A nickname for the Australian dollar is Aussie. Uh, Euro is called the um, fiber. Uh, sorry, Euro is called the fiber. That's correct. And then GBP, your Great British Pound, is called the cable. And the JPY, which is Japanese yen, is called the yen. And what else have we got? We've also got the CHF right here. CHF stands for the Swiss franc. Okay, Switzerland's uh, currency. And the Switzerland currency, Swiss franc, is also called the Swizzy. Okay, and you've got the CAD that stands for Canadian dollar. It's got a nickname as well. It's called the Looney, L-O-O-N-I-E. Okay, and you've also got the NZD, which stands for the New Zealand dollar. That And the nickname for the New Zealand dollar is the Kiwi. Okay, K-I-W-I. -I. So I've covered most of the major currencies. Now, the major currencies, um, they are so-called major currency pairs. Usually when they are actually paired up uh, or pegged or paired up with the U.S. dollar. And they're usually called the major currencies. Okay, hope you guys got that. So just a couple of very, very basics. Now, you've also got that magnifying glass um, sort of icon right here. You can actually zoom in and zoom out. Now, once you've actually zoom in, let's say if you zoom out, you get all the candles sort of minimizes in their sizes right here. And that gives you a bit of an idea of how have they actually moved. Um, for example, we're looking into, let me just get that, get rid of that one there. If we look into all this here, we have got a movement of candles from this very bottom area right here, right to the top, okay? So that movement of candles from the very bottom right here, right to the top, are moving in waves. And that waves create this whole trend. And this is an up sort of trend, okay? Let me see whether I could use something to draw. 
So that movement right there, okay, all the way up here. So that is your high. The highest that the price has actually reached is right up there. It's close to about 1.255. Okay, what that actually means, when you see all these prices right here, all it means is that for every one euro equals to 1.255. So, but then we're looking into the current price right now. So the current price right now, let's say we use the uh, fourth decimal point or place, okay? And you've got the euro trading at 1.2334, let's say. Oh, let's make that 1.2334. Three, five. What that means is that for every one euro equals to 1.24 or 23 cents. That's what it means. Okay, so uh, the base currency, the currency on the left, usually or always will have the value of one. So one euro equals to how much, how much price that you're actually looking at at that moment of time. Okay, so there you go. So you've got that yellow arrow that I've just drawn there. It's not very neat, of course, but then it's pointing upwards. Now, that movement has pointed upwards because you had so many highs. You've got some high price right there, some peak right there, some more price, some more highs, some more highs. So these are all the highest point that prices has reached and have actually made sort of like a stairwell like a staircase to actually point upwards. So that means that this was at a at a an uptrend at that time. So this is your uptrend movement now. From that that high right there, it went lower again, lower, and then when lower it dropped basically and dropped again, dropped, dropped, and that lower highs basically has led to a downtrend. Okay, so there you go. Very easy. Trend should be your friend, but understanding it is really, really important. Because this is where the first phase of analysis actually begins, is by understanding the trend. So this is it. You've got high price right there. You've also got low price. You've got your low price right there. You've got some more lower price, lower price, lower, lower, right? You've got more lower price as well. So in an uptrend, usually you would have higher highs, okay? And low and higher lows. That would make your uptrend. In a downtrend, like this one here, you would have lower highs, okay? You can see all the highs. And then you would have lower lows as well. And all these lows get lower and lower. So in an uptrend, you have got higher highs, higher lows. In a downtrend, you would be expecting lower highs, lower low. And that's it, okay? Just to give you an idea of how trend looks like. Now, in an uptrend, as a forex trader, you want to be clicking onto the buying button to expect more price rise, or if you as a trader expecting more uh, rise in price. Okay, so I'm just going to demonstrate that very, very quickly so you get an idea. Um, give me a second. I'm also going to teach you um, the easiest way to actually determine the trend in three time frames. Okay, so um, that would actually then help you um, practice on your demo account, opening and closing a couple of trades just by the simplest rule of trend. And what we will then do is to bring you guys um, on a course, on a course route every Thursday to actually meet up uh, from now and to actually complete that course and I'll be teaching you more techniques and skills and we'll add that up into puzzle pieces so that you can then practice onto your demo account. Okay guys, all right, so there you go. We've got all that done now. What I'll just remove this one here. Okay, so now this is a zoom out sort of version. Now if I zoom in, you can then look into how you have got bearish type candle. Now, I'll just clarify that. Bullish is when you are expecting an uptrend. That's why we call it bullish. Bearish is when you expect a downtrend, a movement to the downside. And that's called the bearish trend. Okay. So, for example, if I look into this area right here, there seem to be a price fall from this very top right down to this very bottom area. So that actually meant that this whole trend for the EURUSD on the 15 minutes chart 
was on a downtrend or it was bearish at the time and now we have got a bit of a price rise right here so let me zoom in right away and you will see and notice that there are differences <clears throat> between bearish type candle that points down you see that long candle that's filled in now all these filling in of whether they are green or white could actually be changed okay on your platform itself you can actually choose that you can make that red or blue or whatever that is but make that differentiation between a bearish type candle now bearish candle meaning all these candles have actually been falling and the more they actually have fallen that actually has given the indication of a fallen uh, of a falling of price for the euro in comparison to the US dollar. So you, you have actually witnessed a fall of price from this angle right here, right down to here. And once it actually went up right there, came down, you see how it got depreciated and then it shot up again all the way up now. Let's look at price for now. Price for now is at 1.2330, let's say on four decimal places, okay? That's the price as of now. Now, it'll just go bobbing up and down and things like that. Now, this is not the way that we would be wanting to trade. At first, we would want to be very clear of the trend. Now, I'll give you a very simple tip on how you can determine your trend right away. Okay, now let's start. I want you to actually look into the most neutral sort of time frame which is on your one hour chart we'll start off with the one hour chart and then we'll move on to your four hour and then onto your daily chart okay but before anything else i want you to zoom out a little bit <coughs> not to look into a chart with highly zoomed in because when you're actually highly zoomed in you'll miss out on the big picture of the trend now that is a very very important tip okay so pay attention because uh this part of it I'll be also testing you guys with the quiz question, so do pay attention. Let's now look at how we could be applying um, two skills, okay, in understanding the trend, okay? Firstly, I would like you guys to actually zoom out a little bit and start off with the most neutral time frame, which is called the one-hour chart, okay? Now, we will be applying the usage of some tools but a single tool a tool um, that we call it the moving average okay very simple it's an indicator that we will be using it's on your platform on your techno demo account itself very easy you go onto your insert button right there and you click onto indicators and then you move down to the word trend very easy and then you move down to the word moving average. Very simple. Moving average is simply giving you the idea on the average movement of the number of candles that you're looking at or the number of days that you're looking at. That's it, okay? So it's represented by these lines. But I'm going to teach you how do you use these lines and how do you determine the trend before we go on to the second uh sort of module uh next week on thursday to go deep into how we can actually apply these skills into the next steps of analyzing the market and then on to trading the market okay so we go into moving average click on to moving average we'll start off with the number 50. see that word period right there very simple i want you to delete that and replace with the number 50. okay i want you to also look into the word ma method and Click onto the scroll down uh, arrow, the arrow that could make it uh, scroll downwards, and then you actually would then see simple exponential. Click onto exponential. The apply to, leave that with close. Don't do anything with that. Okay, so you leave that. So you've got 50 exponential, close, and you can easily change <coughs> the color that you want. In this case, as an example, I'm just going to put it as light blue. So then you can then look into the light um, blue as your 50 moving average, okay? So next, what you do is you just click on OK, all right? And you will have one of the lines right there. And what you do is you repeat that whole process. I'll be teaching you ways on uploading or saving that template so you don't need to insert that all the time, but we'll take that at a later stage. So then when you click onto the moving average again, I want you to change that period into 100. So what you will end up doing is inserting three lines so you'll be doing this three times and then you will have three lines onto your chart so you will have your 50 
your 100 and your 200 exponential moving averages okay so if i put on my 100 right there i leave that exponential i leave that as close and at my color section i'll change it to another color let's say slightly darker blue okay and then i click on okay you could choose whatever color you want it's not a problem and you click on okay and then you you do it for the third time you do the same thing again indicators you go on to the trend go on to the moving average and then you you uh, change the uh, period to 200 that's your last line okay so in this case here i've got my i've got my three lines right here very simple okay so i've got my three lines right here and how do we know determine the trend with these three lines it's really simple first of all you're looking at it <coughs> excuse me for that you're looking at it um, at a one hour chart. So you start off with a one hour chart. What you want to be looking at after you've inserted the three exponential moving averages is just to make sure and understand where the candles are, the current candles. Look at all these candles right here. Let me zoom in a little bit more for you, okay? Look at all these candles right here. These candles are not above all the three lines. They're not under it, but they're in the middle. They're moving in the middle. They're touching the, the, the three lines as well. Now, you've only got three emotions in the market. The market is driven by greed when you have got candles moving up and up and up towards the sky. And you've also got candles that can actually move sideways like this, just horizontally. When they move horizontally, that actually means that you've got uncertainty in the market. The market itself is not really or not entirely sure whether to go up or to go down. Okay, so that's uncertainty. So you've got market could be driven by greed, number one emotion. Okay, number two emotion, uncertainty. That's when the candles are moving sideways. Okay, very simple. Look at this area right here. You have got candles just moving sideways, and we call it like a three o'clock angle. When you have candles like that, that actually means that there's some uncertainty in the market. When the market is in doubt, you as a trader should be staying out. That's the tip I could give you today. Okay, so if it's actually trading sideways, that's actually not a good sign that the trend is strong. It's just simply no trend as yet sideways trend because it's driven by uncertainty when you've actually got the market dropping right downwards we call it a six o'clock type angle because if you look into your watch or the clock you could see that if you imagine this whole movement of all these candles as a straight line they may be pointing at about five o'clock or 5 30 or something like that but it's pointing downwards to the floor and it's actually pointing you to the downtrend and that's called a bearish type trend it's called a six o'clock type uh, trend or a bearish downtrend okay very simple and what do you think that whole movement to the downside is driven by what emotion you guys know Someone want to guess? What's the most powerful sort of emotion in the market? What do you guys think? Anybody would like to uh, volunteer answering that? Because I might actually just test you guys on the uh, quiz questions as well. Let's see. Fantastic. Fear does actually stand for false evidence appearing real as well for you guys who would like to... Uh, understand it from a different perspective so that is brilliant well done simon and tom uh, fantastic so definitely fear so fear does actually then bring it to the downside so um, it does also depend uh, on the angle that is actually trading i'm just going to give you that tip right there this tip is a very very powerful one let me just show you what i mean now if i draw that look at this whole angle that's actually dropped yeah is dropped and look at that angle that angle is quite steep quite steep meaning that that whole angle of trend is actually closer to six o'clock angle okay now you could also have uh, an angle like this this angle here is quite close to that angle now the steeper it is the stronger the trend that's the trick okay that's that's the uh, that's the tip there so here for example you see how steep that is 
okay this is reasonably steep as well now if you've got an angle of um, trend moving like that for example that's not very steep that actually means that that trend that downtrend hasn't probably matured as much and it may not be as strong yet maybe it's building up but not that strong okay <coughs> Excuse me. So the other thing as well that's really, really key for you guys to understand as well is it's not a matter of um, knowing that the trend is very weak or very, very strong. It is very important to understand whether or not the trend is weak and getting weaker so that you have got a chance to participate in the market or whether that trend is strong, getting stronger. Okay, let's get back to understanding how you actually look into the trend with the use of the exponential moving average, okay? To know whether or not it's a better buying position that you would be looking at or a selling position. So here you go. Now, when you actually look into candles like this, you need to compare with at least three time frames, not just one time frame. It's not enough, not sufficient data, okay? A lot of traders don't actually do that. Okay, but this is how we want to actually be trading with high probability, lower risk type trade. If you trade with high probability, lower trade type analysis, then you're actually more, I mean, would be looking into becoming more a trader investor as opposed to a trader gambler. Okay, this is basically the difference between traders nowadays. All right, so here, if I move my time frame to the four hour time frame, I still get that same situation whereby the candles are in between three lines. When they're in between three lines, it's just a good sign to stay out for a while until you get candles going above or under. Let me just go on to a different time frame. And I want to just demonstrate a little bit on what's going on. Let me just uh, get rid of all the objects right there. Give me a second. I think I've got my platform just playing up a little bit. Give me a second, guys. All right, I think I better just go back to, not sure what happened there, but okay. So let's look at this one here. If I move this on there, we've got three lines already set up, but I just, just, Wanting to go on to a different time frame right here. I'm not sure why, but it's nothing's actually moving on my end at this moment of time. Sorry about that, guys. Okay, let's get going anyway. Um, with your, um, if for example you're looking into the GBP USD at this moment of time, we're looking into um, GBP USD, and this is a four-hour chart. I mean, I know there's some lines on it and things like that. I'm trying to remove them. Um, just let me just do that nothing's actually probably just got stuck a little bit I'm not sure why but we're looking into the same scenario for gbp gbp stands for your great Brit, um, british pound okay so your pound sterling versus the usd is trading on a sideway market at this moment of time and you can actually see that by the way the three lines are moving these three lines, exponential moving average, are also moving sideways. If they're moving sideways and you have got all these candles in between the lines, that's telling you that <clears throat> you may be on a risky sort of zone. You may be in a zone that may not be giving you a very clear indication, indication of the trend. Sorry, guys, I think I've got some question right here. Hi there, Thabogo. Welcome. It's okay, um, it will be recorded, this webinar will be recorded, so kindly get in touch with your account manager uh, at Tickmill, and I, I, I'm very sure he'll be able to help you out uh, with getting your uh, recording. Okay, so don't worry. Yes, I understand, a little bit, uh, a little confused with the time zones, I understand, yeah. I'm actually uh, reporting live on the market right now uh, from Limassol in Cyprus. I think we're in the same time zone. Are you guys from... Uh, South Africa or which which part of Africa are you from? Tobago, RSA from Joburg, from Durban. Brilliant. Okay, nice, fantastic, good. I think we're on the same time uh, same time zone. If I'm not mistaken, we're just one minute away from eight p.m. Joburg, 
Shop, shop. Nice, the bogo. Good to see you. All right. <laughs> That's right. Yeah, seriously, in Cyprus, I, I, I love South Africa anyway. Been there for the fifth, sixth time already. So, yeah. Malaysia, apa kabar? I'm, I'm Malaysian myself, but been away for a very long time. Good. <laughs> Bagus. So, I hope you guys actually enjoyed that uh, a bit. I just would like to also know a little bit more uh, about how we can actually proceed for the next uh, course in terms of uh, questions that you guys may have so that I can cover that in my second, um, you know, course structure. Um, are you guys mostly having experience uh, here or you guys are totally new, beginners? Are you, are you guys beginners at the moment? Hi there, Paul from Nigeria. Brilliant. Good to see you. Beginner as well, Kara. I see. Fantastic. Good. Okay. Total beginners. I mean, we are able to um, come up with a, a good course program for you guys at Tickmill. So uh, what that means is that I like to apply uh, only about 30% of theory, but the rest of it, 70% should be, um, you know, practical sort of knowledge that you can apply onto the, uh, the, uh, uh, your trading, your personal trading. So uh, what we are doing now is we are combining all these up, uh, uh, what happens on Thursdays will be tutorial type. So I'll be going through certain topics, you know, and certain skills, certain techniques and all that. But then do join me every Tuesday because that's the best part. Tuesday is live market. So Tuesdays, every Tuesdays will be going on live. I'll be giving you guys trade ideas so you guys can then um, uh, focus on that and, and apply uh, those techniques. And you can see me drawing the lines, analyzing the market live. And uh, you can open your trades on your demo account and see it for yourself, you know. And uh, we've got geometric uh, pattern analysis as well so i'll be teaching you guys that too okay now before we go on further i think we we don't have much time uh tonight uh but what we can i can do is that i'll be happy to to answer some questions from you guys if you guys have got any questions that uh perhaps even topics that you would like me to actually cover next week in terms of i mean from a beginner's level would there be uh something that you would like more clarification in perhaps like um, you know, opening orders or do you guys understand about lot sizing, you know, about how much should you actually be trading, a little bit of a risk management, money management side of things, uh, you know, would there be any questions that you guys would like me to answer and help you understand a little bit more? Any topics that I can actually write down so I, I, I make, I'll make sure that I won't forget them so we can then cover them in next Thursday's tutorial. But do join me on Tuesday, though, because we've got loads of trade ideas next week as well. So you can then check it out, check the trade ideas out, and uh, and trade them. OK, we've got a couple of things here. Fantastic. I like that you guys are really proactive with loads of nice topics that are very, very relevant. Kara, you come up came up with something really fantastic right here. You've got um, risk, lot sizing, fantastic. I've got simple formulas for you next week on Thursday on how you can actually then decide how much should you trade. Now, there are a lot of, um, uh, what do you call that? Um, it's actually very important to understand that how you're trading, which time frame does actually depend on your equity as well. Okay, so I want to connect all that. So that's good that uh, you guys have confirmed that these are, areas that you want to actually go into so i'll promise you one thing join me again thursday so we can actually go on next week into this area i've got very simple formulas for you to understand how can you actually pick the right lot sizing how would you know if you've got 500 100 how much how many uh trades you can open per time and all that kind of thing so yes let's go into that deep uh and we'll open a couple of trades with that as well with simple um technical analysis as well and we we want to demonstrate and see how that works that's good um the values of the ema uh Nadumi miso is uh 50 they are sorry 50 100 and 200 but they are exponential moving averages okay applied on close um, money management yes money management and risk management they're all connected uh they actually 
deal a lot with your psychology as a trader. So we will cover the lot sizing side of things, definitely. Uh, leverage and lot sizing will combine that. What's the best leverage that you can actually use depending on your equity that you have, Tom, that's uh, good. And uh, Berwin as well, uh, you are into leverage lot sizing. We've also got, um, I think you can cut off for registration, if I'm not mistaken, when you actually registered, you've, you're, you're registering for the whole lot, uh, but I'm not sure you can actually confirm that with your account manager at Tickmill. Um, do ask them, send them the email. But if I'm not mistaken, if you have actually registered, you, you, you have registered for the whole lot, if I'm not mistaken. Okay, do check with uh, Tickmill for that. Um, when to yes entry and exit now the the best thing about um the course is that we will be covering um a technique uh, a, met a methodology called um geometric patterns and i have tweaked that quite nicely to help you understand it in a simple form so uh, in drawing the patterns we have got ideal entries and exits but more than ideal entries and exit it's price action so i want to cover with you guys as well on thursdays one of the thursdays you will be actually given um more knowledge on psychological numbers so that would then make you understand what's the best price for entry and how do you actually avoid um how do you cut your risk from getting reversed. You know, you know, sometimes when you enter the market and then you think that, oh, that candle is just going up and you think that the price can go up, but then just suddenly it just reverses on you. And usually 80 to 90% of the time that it reverses at a psychological level. And I want to introduce you to psychological levels and pricing that can actually help you to enter and exit at the most ideal price so we'll cover that as well don't worry okay uh, are we going to receive um yes you i think you will get uh, you will get notification uh Berwin, to your email address so uh do confirm that as well with your account manager but i'm very sure that you'll be sent notifications of this webinars or these webinars that i do okay um I think you could, uh, I'm not sure about the ID, but I think in, in my um, opinion, I think you, when you register once, it covers all the four times, if I'm not mistaken, but you can always check that, okay? And uh, check your email and uh, reply that email back to your account manager as well, if you've got any questions about that. Uh, how do we place and when to place stop orders? Yes, we have got, there are several techniques, actually, Belinda, when it comes to stop losses, okay? Um, I would like to introduce you uh, ways in applying your stop loss in a very, very simple way using Fibonacci. But I need to start the Fibonacci course with you guys first, giving you a bit of an idea on Fibonacci. I know it sounds really nice, but it's actually quite a cool tool to actually use in trading Forex uh, because we use a lot of price action. And uh, there are simple rules in using uh, stop losses. You've got the risk reward ones. I'll talk to you guys about it when we cover next week on Thursday on the money management, risk management side of it. And I'll cover a little bit on the pattern, very, very basic patterns on how you can actually use simple pattern predict the market a little bit by knowing the trend and then knowing the right prices. And with that, we will then be able to understand um, how do we actually place your stop losses correctly based on price action, support resistance, and a couple of other things. Simple, simple but delicious ingredients to make that uh, pot of pips for you guys. Okay, hopefully. All right. So that's basically what the... Uh, all, um, intentions are here is to educate you practically okay so you can understand so um, stop loss options various yeah but uh, various options but we are going to go into that um, but I would like to explain to you guys on uh, price actions on the on the money and risk management side of it will be covered next week uh, on the lot sizes and I'll go into stop losses as well with that okay um, on Martin's question the difference between smooth, simple, that's a good, a very good question, but I, I'll uh, answer it very simply. What it does when you actually um, uh, apply the EMA, so exponential, it just, it just becomes a little bit more sensitive. When, it, when I say more sensitive, what I mean is that the line reacts to the closing price of the candle and the high price and the low price 
uh, in a much sharper way as opposed to the uh, simple moving average. And sometimes it depends on your strategy. Uh, some strategies don't actually need that. Uh, but for me, I actually use moving averages solely as my trend indicator. Okay, so I don't use it for entries or exits or uh, crossings and stuff like that. So for me, I would like a, a sharper, more sensitive type, uh, what do you call that um, uh, type of uh, moving average. So I've chosen the exponential moving average that has actually worked for me for the past seven years very nicely in helping me determine the trend. Okay, so I'll explain that uh, a lot more as well as we go along. Uh, so on Tuesdays, uh, I will share with you and and uh, and show you uh, practically on a live market how does this EMA actually works, how does the price action actually um, you know responds and candle responds to these EMAs and also on the psychological levels as well. Okay, uh, yes, you can, Monica, um, use. Uh, lines support and resistant line now the thing is that i would like to also share with you on drawing support and resistant zones not line okay um, because there's there's a lot of misconception in the market nowadays whereby traders are taught uh, not the accurate way of drawing support resistant zones they are actually taught to draw just a single line and a single line uh, is quite risky to draw a single line to actually represent support or resistance. So there are ways, very, very simple ways in drawing support resistance zones. So your support resistance zones should actually be made of at least or a minimum of two lines. And I'll, I'll teach you guys on how to actually do that as well. Okay. Monica, that's a very good one. Uh, good question. Good, good um, focus on support resistance because support resistance is actually price action uh, as well. Price inaction. Okay, that's what it actually means. So, um, Martin Joseph, no problem. Most welcome. Uh, we will do that. Uh, we will definitely go go on to the uh, options as well, Martin, for sure. Okay. Volume. Um, how does Sikhle, uh have asked about how does uh, volume help in trading uh, decisions? Volume is quite a, um, I would say in Forex trading, volume is really, really tricky because, because of the very vast, heavy traffic uh, volume traded per day, trillions per day in the Forex market, is very difficult to pin down exact numbers in volume. But Definitely, they are hints that can actually um, give you a clue of whether or not the volume is highly, I mean, highly traded for the day. So, hence the reason it's always good uh, for us to understand why we are picking that trade, that pair for the day. So, this is something that I would like to um, also share with you guys on uh, on a, on a trader's daily routine. How does a trader? a real trader actually picks a pair or the best pair to trade for the day. And that's basically where you need to actually combine various factors, understand where do you find information about big boys that are moving the market and uh, for the day, what are the focus by traders, which pair? Because you may be looking at Euro USD, but then uh, what if I could show you a place where it shows that most traders are trading the AUD JPY? And why the AUD JPY? Why is it not AUD USD? You see, so there are various ways, and we are going to venture and explore into that area as well. And that is a, a very good first step to actually understand how you pick the right pair to trade for the day. And that is where you could then understand that the volume is in play, the cash flow for that for that uh, pair is also very, very important. So um, we should be riding what the big boys are actually trading. And that's basically where we could be cutting a little bit out our risk and increasing our probability of success. Okay. Elliott Wave Theory, very nice topic, Nicholas. Elliott Wave Theory and Fibonacci combined with support resistance, yes. I mean, for all that you've actually mentioned, Elliott wave, okay, wave cycles and trend, they're all connected, okay? So what that actually means is that price, it all, it all boils down to price at the end of the day, price action. Why? Because price uh, moves in waves and waves move in trend and trend moves in cycles. Very easy. 
Okay, so the Elliott wave, yes, it's very, very interesting theory as well, the use of Fibonacci. But when you put Fibonacci and the waves theory uh, in motion, and then you talk about support resistant levels or, or zones, you're talking about price action. You're talking about the reaction of price at certain point, concentration point, where it bounces up from, and if it goes up and up and up, where would it actually be reversing? So we're talking about price action. We will actually go into that and uh, have a little bit of snippet of the of, of the theory of Elliott Wave and a couple of other things as well. But I've got some very interesting Fibonacci ratio to actually um, uh, what do you call that, uh, share with you guys, and hence the reason I would like to introduce you guys to geometric patterns. So you will get that very, very soon, the next tutorial. Uh, but do, do join me before Thursday for the Tuesday one, because I would then be sharing with you great trade ideas. I'll be pre-drawing all the analysis beforehand, and uh, you'll be able to test them out on your Tickmill demo account. Okay, which pairs have higher profits? <laughs> That's a very, very, very interesting, good question. Um, actually, um, we put it this way. Most of the pairs, uh, they, they have their own personality and they've got their own behavior. They would actually be moving depending on what would move them. So, for example, AUDJPY or let's say GBPJPY or EURUSD, they all have their days and moments that they would actually be moving the most. It all depends on what would move them. So that could actually include... Um, the economic data releases, you've got some news that revolves, you've got some economic or political uh, type news that would impact them. So, for example, if for this whole week, let's say, uh, we are expecting uh, six to seven speeches by the ministers in the UK talking about Brexit, okay, and uh, we're expecting that these speeches have got an impact to the market. So hence the reason we may be looking at, oh, GBP. So GBP at the time, for the time that the speech would actually be released and for the time that the hot topic of the market will be on Brexit, will actually move GBP a lot. Okay. So let's say, for example, at the time, um, it would be a lot of, there would be a lot of volume and volatility that will revolve around the GBP. So GBP would be one of the, one of the, currency that would be picked by traders to 